Okay, we'll get this lesson started in just a moment. First, I want to get some feedback from the viewers of these tutorials. Right here, I have a picture of a version 2. My question is, when I press the M key, what do you press on version 2 to get the same results? I would suspect it's the OK key, but I'm not certain. So I'll give me some feedback so I'll know which key the version 2 presses, which is equivalent to the M key on the version 1.1 model. Just so that you know, the hardware is also open source. Here's a schematic of the DSO-201 version 2.3 schematic. And it says it's just as open source as the firmware. So what a deal, right? The opportunities are endless. Okay, once you've uh, established your probe connections, turn the unit back on. And you see that we have a default sweep here. And then this is the time when you first use the FIT function. So you scroll down here to the FIT function, which is under the trigger mode, and you push the M button. And then you push and hold the M button until it switches to FIT up here in the left hand corner. See right here it says FIT. So that fits the display, fits the waveform under the display. And if you try to change the, for example, the times horizontal time base, which is the time per division. When you start changing it, FIT always puts it back where it wants it. So FIT is a control of your vertical choices and your horizontal choices, as long as it's on. So the main purpose of FIT is to get everything started, to get, get things the way you want it, so you can see what you're looking at. So once you want to turn off FIT, once you've found what you're looking for. So you go back down to your trigger mode. Press the M key, and on the mode choice right here, as it says trigger mode, right now it's in fit. We're going to change that to auto for right now. We'll explain why later. So that's how you would use the fit mode to get started with your waveform. Many times you don't know what the waveform should be, and this will help you find it. Now that the waveform is set up, we can go ahead and manually change the volts per division scales. All you do is select the choice, volts per division, and use the left and right arrow keys to change those numbers. Notice it's over here, it says 2 volts per division. Must have been 2 volts. Now it's 2 volts per division. So we can also change the time base the time per division and that is right here left to right arrows again and you see it change right up here 100 microseconds 50 microseconds we'll go the other way we'll see more of the waveform so you can modify these once you get the thing in view another issue we want to address right up here in front is the measurement function. If you push the measurement function, the M key while you're in the measurement function mode, notice it's displaying the frequency. We probably have a trigger issues while it's jumping around. Duty cycle, VRMS, the pulses. We'll discuss those later. On down the list. What I, what I want to point out is right now, frequency, the, the thing is currently selected is what's showing up here in this little location on the screen. We're going to scroll down the down arrow and change it to duty cycle. Now when we leave this pop-up menu by pressing the M button, the choice you selected will remain up there at the top of the screen until you change it. So now we'll go down here to the frequency output, push the M button, and we'll select
frequency duty cycle, the down arrow, and we'll change the duty cycle with the right arrow. As we change it, you'll see it down here. It will change. This percentage will change. We'll run it up like 73% duty cycle. What that means is the waveform is up for 73% of the time and it's down for the remainder of the 100%. Notice up here our duty cycle is always displayed as we change it. Let's say that you want to see what the frequency is. Now what we do is scroll up, the up arrow up to the frequency out choice. And down here at the bottom you can see the frequency. It's one kilohertz. We can use the right and left arrow keys to change it. We can run it up or down in frequency. Put it back on one kilohertz. So that's how you operate the FR modes of the oscilloscope. Hit the M key to exit this pop-up. And now we're looking at the probe calibrator signal. Notice there's a little bit of rise time here. It's not compensated. All it is is a straight piece of wire. And that concludes this startup session. Okay, at this time, let's... let's uh, experiment with the trigger bubbles for a little bit. So we scroll up to the trigger function, press the M key to bring up the pop-up menu of choices. We're going to look at the trigger bubble for a second. So we scroll down one point to trigger bubble. We use the right arrows and the left arrows to set the trigger bubble. See how the trigger bubble is right at the top of the signal? That's like it was unstable. Now it should be very stable. Be continuously triggered at this time. So once you notice right now we're in the auto trigger mode and notice this transition arrow, it's on positive transitions. So if you want to change that, that's the trigger kind down here. So we scroll down to down arrow, trigger kind, and then right arrow changes it to positive or negative transitions. So we'll leave it on positive transitions. So now it shows positive transitions and work triggers. The trigger triangle is right here, this little yellow arrow. And notice it's triggering when it goes positive. If we change that to negative transitions, and you notice the trigger point is when it goes negative, right here. So that's how you control which one it triggers on. We'll do a quick quick scan of another issue here called trigger sensitivity. And basically, a quick review, we'll do another tech lesson on it later. But basically, it says that the signal has to remain within those two lines, the upper and lower line. That's the threshold of sensitivity. If we adjust the threshold so that it exceeds the actual signal, then the signal will fall out of sync. Notice now it's really not in sync. It might look like it's in sync, but it's got jitter to it. And that's going to bring us to another part of the trigger system. We're going to look at the trigger mode for a moment. If we scroll up here to the trigger mode, auto is going to generate a suite no matter what happens. So we're going to put it with the left and right arrow. We're going to put it in the normal mode, which means it needs triggers to keep generating sweep displays. Notice right here that the up-down arrow, in this case it's a down arrow, went red. That means there's no trigger available for the normal, normal mode of triggering. We can force the trigger by stopping and running it, and it looked for one. You notice it flashes, watch it flash yellow. It looks for a trigger, didn't find one, so it goes back to waiting. So it's basically waiting right now for a trigger, because we're in a normal mode of trigger mode. If we move our trigger level down where it can find a trigger, And then lo and behold, it finds a trigger and the sweep starts repeating itself. Negative transition is triggering right here. And if we look at the trigger sensitivity, I bump it up and down one. I'm in the wrong one. I want, notice I want the kind, like a big dummy. I want to go to sensitivity. Take the trigger sensitivity down. Now the transition is always within the upper and lower limits of the trigger sensitivity, therefore you have a nice solid trigger at all times. We'll see later there will be situations where you want to use the
trigger mode called single sweep. What single sweep, single sweep does, it captures one complete sweep. Turn this off. One complete sweep and it displays that forever until you say go do another one. So if I hit the run stop, it just did another capture of a single sweep. This is useful when you got a jittery signal. You want to look at it and hold what you see without having a jitter. And we'll talk about jitter later. So the other, on the M key, the other, we've covered all four modes, all four functions of the trigger function. There's the trigger mode, which is automatic, normal, single, and then if you hold the M key while you're in the mode choice, it goes to fit, and the fit keeps it there no matter what you do. Then you have to go back to trigger mode again, M key, and select something other than fit. Normal, which means it gives you sweeps and triggers as long as it finds a trigger. Single, it's got to it gives you one sweep only, waits till you get the RS to repeat it. And auto, auto mode. Most people leave in auto mode. Very wrong with C situations where the auto mode is inadequate. So that's a quick review of the trigger functions available in this oscilloscope. Okay, I just realized there's some, some terminology we have to clarify. I was talking about the trigger mode a few minutes ago. I made a few grammatical errors, so let's get this clarified right now. Up here in the corner right now, the scope is set up for a normal sweep. See the normal sweep symbol. I'm going to take the trigger level, and I'm going to lower it down, or raise it up until we lose triggering. At this point, the normal sweep mode is waiting for a trigger. So what does that mean? The digital, the DSO oscilloscopes have what's called an acquisition time. They acquire the signal data, and they process the information, and they display it. So right now, Acquisition events are being created in normal, but he's not finding a trigger, therefore he's not updating the screen display because he doesn't have a trigger present. When I bring the trigger down, I get my brain to work, trigger level, he's left there. I bring the trigger down to a finds trigger, now each acquisition results in a trigger. And if you notice right now, we're on a pos positive transition trigger and the trigger point is on the positive transition of the waveform. So we're going to change the kind. Now we're on a negative transition, and the waveform trigger point occurs when the waveform is transiting negative. We have to keep the acquisition concept separate from the trigger concept. The trigger is a part of the acquisition process. Well, it could be a part of it, it may fail. But the acquisition process is a different story. If we hit the RS button and stop, notice the normal turned red. That means the acquisitions are no longer taking place. The whole the whole oscilloscope is waiting. It's in a wait mode right now, waiting for acquisition time cycles. Once you run it, it gets acquisition time cycles. But if the trigger level is inadequate, It run the acquisition time cycles, but during the acquisition, it doesn't find a trigger. Therefore, it doesn't update the display. So your display just remains the last thing that it found, the last time it did trigger. If you notice, come down here where it's starting to trigger. Get right down there where that uncompensated signal makes the trigger a little bit erratic. And I can't demonstrate what I want to show you. At any rate. If we go to single sweep, and this is a different different world. Go up here to trigger mode, set it for single sweep. Now what's happening is the oscilloscope is now waiting for an acquisition event. So 
we do our single sweep, our run start, we say, okay, in other words, it's in a stop mode right now. It's not doing any acquisitions. We say, let's run it once. It does an acquisition, and it found that signal. Now, if we take our trigger level, raise it up above, we run a new acquisition, and it doesn't find anything because it, the, even though the single sweep acquisition took place, the trigger parameters were not met, therefore the display was displaying that acquisition result, which is nothing on the screen. So hopefully this will help you keep in mind the difference between trigger and acquisition. Right now I stopped all single sweep acquisitions. I won't even try to do one. If I turn on the acquisition, it's still not finding any trigger, so it's waiting for a trigger. If I come down here and drop my trigger level, now the acquisition finds a trigger, and now the acquisition has been killed because it's a single sweep mode. It does one acquisition, if it finds a trigger, then it stops. And it's waiting forever until we tell it to do something else. So hopefully this will clear up a little bit the difference between acquisition and triggering. If you expect to receive the maximum benefit from these tutorials, you have to do some reading on your own. Right now we're looking at the PDF file which came with the BenF version 3.40 upgrade. He's taking the time to explain all the, all the functionality that he's addressed. And he tells you what everything is and how it works. Does a very good job. So it's your responsibility to set a little bit of time aside and read this. It's only a nine-page document. It's not like it's going to take you forever. So that's one requirement to get, maximize the benefit of this training. The other thing you should do is go to this Tektronix website, tek.com. Down here, there's a sliding window. If we start sliding it around, we'll find right here, get your all-new XYZs of oscilloscopes. It's a primer booklet. It's very good. I've downloaded it. I think it's well worth the time and effort. Click here to download it. Once you do that, you click right here to download the actual PDF file. And once you download the file, it looks like this. And what I recommend you do is read at least the first nine pages. The first nine pages will give you oscilloscope fundamentals. Once in a while, I get off on a little tangent about ultra sophisticated things but overall it does a very good job of explaining what you need to know in the first nine pages so I'll read the first nine pages before you go to the next lesson otherwise you're shortchanging yourself so good luck